is the formula, and then the C, we understand the C is the word of God, and the sword is you and I. We define the parable as a simple story used to illustrate a moral, a spiritual lesson, that uses images, symbols, it's on the screen, you can look at it on the screen, and it also gives us vivid imagery, vivid thing means that something you can see moving, something active, to bring the mind, to activate the mind, to direct the mind into walking out what is being said. And we also saw that the Bible means to cast the love side, to direct the love. And we understand in this story, Jesus Christ is giving this parable to compare that is put alongside a common occurrence from daily life in order to teach a spiritual truth. So Jesus was a teaching a spiritual truth. He said that in my kingdom, the word is being preached. But that word is not being received as God to all people. Because there are some that hear the word and they don't do anything. There are some that hear the word few days or few months down the road, that word disappear. And there are even those, the word that don't have an impact because they have breathed the Holy Spirit in them. And then we have a kind of part of the Bible that happens in everyday life where the word is preached and you begin to see the fruit of that word. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Like we read this morning in, uh, as in uh, Matthew chapter 18, where God is saying this if someone has offended you, or someone has sinned against you, go and see that person. Talk with the Lord. If that person hear, glory be to God, the kingdom is more, as more. But if doesn't hear, doesn't take into account what you are going to bring with him or her, go back and find the two or three people, bring them to appeal for forgiveness. But if it doesn't take place, go and ask the church. If that person doesn't hear the church, the Bible says, leave them as pagans or pagans. Why? It's because this thing happens every day in our life. That's why Jesus Christ is teaching it. He is making a comparison between what is happening in everyday life and why is making that comparison is for us to talk a spiritual truth. We must know because we are spiritual beings. We possess a mind and we live in a body. We also say that power often invites the audience to reflect on their behavior by inspiring a moral and spiritual lesson. It is my prayer that what I'm going to show you here must help you to be able Look at your own behavior. How do you behave when you come to buy the things of God? Are you more important than God or God, God is important than you? That's your decision. But remember, as I've said to you always, God has the ultimate decision. God has the final decision. That's why we sit every morning here. We say, who has the final say? And we say they all have the balance. It would be foolish for us to think that we are above God. God is not the respect of a person. And in every nation, in every land where people seek justice, God can them well. That's why in life we have to stand honest and walk. Whether you are in Asia or in Africa or in Europe or in America or in Oceania, you have to stand on the truth. You have to walk 
pass away. The earth will pass away. Your God will pass away. Your wife will pass away. Your husband will pass away. Your children will pass away. Your bank account will pass away. But the world, God will not pass away. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. And if God will not pass away, must appear to you that if you want to live an eternal life, then you need to hook yourself with God. God is God before we were born. God is God when we were born. God is God when we live this kind of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was uh, exalting brethren uh, a couple weeks ago. I said to them that one of uh, the power and the authority of God when no one can take it away is God who orders your birth and God also God who orders your death. No one can take this power from God. In between your birth and your death, God can have Leave you with liberty to decide because he's giving you the free will. And that free will is the ability for you to make choices and decisions. Praise the name of the Lord. But these two things are in the hand of God. So if you want to enjoy the birth as well as enjoy the departure, keep yourself with God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. The birth of the soul is more of a story about soul than the soul. Praise the name of the Lord. My brother, are you still with us on your reform? You can't do good things at the same time. You are standing in the gate, do what God is asking you. Praise the name of God. So the power of the soul, so we move on, I'm talking about the power of the soul, is more of a story of a soul of a soul than the soul. To the relationship of soul, the seed and the soul is related. The seed and the soul must, the seed and the soil must be in relationship. If the seed and the soil are not in relationship, there will be germination and there will be growth of the plant. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You will agree with me that if the seed is not in a good soil, that seed will not germinate. Do you agree with me? The same thing if you are not in line with the message God has given us, your life will be full of frustration and pain. Remember in the Bible study we saw that if we do not seek the reason why we are on planet Earth, we will learn ourselves in a life of frustration and failure. We will try to blame someone. We will try to find excuses to justify what we have done. We will think that we are better than God. We will develop this emotional behavior and say, I don't want anyone to tell me what I have to do. I decide the way I want to decide. I do what I want to do. I go where I want to go. And I stay away from it. I stay away. Why? Because you have become God. But if you believe that God is above you, therefore, submit yourself unto the Lord. So that's why the soil and the sea must always be related. The same thing, the, the message of God and us, we have to be related. And if we are related, we're going to be able to live a good life. We're going to produce hundredfold. We're going to produce two hundredfold. We're going to produce beyond that. Why? Because we are related. The sea is the message. And we know that God is the message. And the soul is you and I. Praise the name of the Lord. And he said, the power of the soul is more of a story about the soul 
and about a soul. Through the relationship of uh, the soul, the seed, and the soil, Jesus will show us the different way in which we respond to the message of the kingdom of God. How do you respond when the word is preached? You will find that people who go to church every Sunday, they hear the word, but they don't practice the word. Why? Because they don't understand the word. Why? Because the relationship is not there. Those of you who watched the Bible study last week, last week, sorry, I said the first purpose of God for man is relationship. God wants to relate to you. God wants you and him to talk as we are talking right now. God wants to fellowship with you. He wants to communicate. If there's no relationship between us and God, we are in deep trouble. We are in crisis. We will be abandoned to ourselves and begin to do things that are lower than the mind of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's why, my brothers and sisters, being a Christian is a lifetime journey which will require dedication, devotion, attachment, commitment, loyalty. We have to leave the Lord alone. No matter what, no matter what we want to we have to be loyal. We have to be what we call fidelity. If we are not loyal to God, we will never be loyal to ourselves and we will never be loyal to anybody. We will be just a self-centered, self-centered. We will struggle. Coming to the Lord requires devotion. Quiet to the Lord requires commitment. You do the will of God than your will. Your will becomes secondary. The will of God becomes primary. That's why the Colossians, the Apostle Paul is telling them about letting Christ the preeminent, the superiority first. In your home, make Christ Jesus first. In everything you do, make your house the above for the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to ask yourself if Christ came in my house today, will you be happy? Will you come and see? Remember in the book of Revelation, uh, Jesus Christ is standing at the door, knocking at the door, saying that if you hear my voice, open the door. I would like to come in, sit down, and suffer with you. So ask it yourself is your house honoring God, or is your house honoring yourself? You need to experience pain. It's not going to be attached to Christ. It's not going to be committed to Christ. But you need also to acknowledge that pain will come. I like when the Apostle Paul is saying, all I need to know is the suffering of Christ. For I bear his love. There are people in life, whatever they do, they know that I'll go to pain. I'll go to sin. I go to defeat, but I don't stand strong. Nothing in life comes to you. I was talking to somebody last, last night, called me, um, that complained and uh, going on the phone and saying, Pastor, why is all this? I said, nothing good comes to you. You have to go through fire. You have to go through flood. You have to go through rejection, disappointment. But don't you give Stand strong because all this makes you strong as you go through all these tests. So when you get there, you're not wasting that. Remember, if I take in my pocket today, I give you hundred pounds, you will not bother to spend it anyhow. But any hundred pounds you earn after working 10 hours, 12 hours, 20 hours, you will not spend it anyhow. You think twice before you spend it. That's why you see mothers, they don't have the same level of love as fathers. Because mothers understand the 
value of a child is more than a pound. Because when it matters, remember the pain they went through. They remember the suffering they went through. They remember how things were so hard for them. When they say push, they couldn't push. They had to have a tap on the back. They said, you almost there. Keep on pushing. Imagine a never accomplished children. There will be a time in life. Christ will come to 
up in the first heaven. We thank God for you in the second heaven. So that's the first believe that Christ will thank all of us because I've been part of it. I don't know where you've been part of it. And I don't know about sisters and brothers who use what you need from all. Whether you be part of the first rapture when Christ comes. And the day you take them before he takes us. But for this to happen, you cannot be on the wayside. When God you hear the word of God, or you read the word of God, but you don't understand what you are reading. These are people who have the heart added to word God and are not willing to hear anything God says. This one instantly fall away. Let me go to the second one. The second one says that there are others who hear the message and they get very excited. They jump into, into it without counting the cost. For example, we heard this morning, let God examine us. Oh, yeah, we heard the budget line. And now he said, okay. He had the leaflet. He had the people. He said, oh, is that what I'm going to do? Let him come tell the people. Because remember, when we go and fight the last, people will reject you. People will trust you. People will say things that you maybe you don't like. But because we made a decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever the cost, I'm going to still stand and tell the world. So then, when things start getting hard, when persecution comes, how come come? They give up because they do not know when the true faith will be given. That is why Jesus said, we count the cost when he talks about it in Luke chapter 14. Jesus in chapter 14, verse, from verse 27, he said, before you build a house, what are the costs? It's going to cost you. Don't just start a project and then somewhere you stop and you're back. It takes cost to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes ability to stand against persecution. It takes ability to stand against disappointment, rejection. People will reject you. People will even become in enmity, in enmity with you. Because you're telling them about Jesus Christ. Many are called, but few are chosen. Why? Because it's not easy to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, these type of people are probably the most common in the world today. This is where the seed falls in the thorn ground. You know the thorns? Where the seed falls in the thorny ground. When the seed begins to germinate and begin to grow, the seed starts choking the ground. And Christ is saying, these type of people are probably the most common in the world today. These people hear the message and respond, but they cannot follow through because they don't want to leave all the desires and cares of the world. We have the example of the wife of Lot. The wife of Lot has been told by the angel that God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But remember, in Sodom and Gomorrah, drink was free. Women were all over the place, dancing anyhow, dressing anyhow. The lust of the flesh was so much hard. The lust of the heart is the pride of love. Although love was living with, because the angel said, You want to take on your family? Come on. God's about to destroy. Love went even to fetch his wife wherever she was. Said, Let them out of the world. Let them out of Sodom. God is about to destroy. The Bible says that as the wife was living Sodom, that she's still looking back. Still looking back to the past, still looking back to the breast, still looking back to the friend, still looking back to pornography, still looking back to masturbation, still looking back to stealing, still looking back to lying, still looking back to murder. This thing in the world of the Lord to see the glory of God. And it's something we have of people to this day 
That's great. They say, let's go to church. One time the church is going to start. All right, I'll be there. Jesus out of the house on the Sabbath. 
by the sea's side. A great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into the ship and sat, and the multitude stood on the shore, and he spake unto them. And part of saying, Behold, the sorrow went out to sow. A man went out to sow. That's the parable. That's the image Jesus is giving us. Remember, whenever you hear parable, it's image. Parable is a symbol. Now, the symbol is a man went out to sow. What is the meaning of that? The spiritual meaning is the man represents God, and the seed is his message or the word of God. How do we interpret that? Look what interpretation in the interpretation says. Just as the plant of the seed starts to grow, the word of God starts to deepen and grow within the person. So when I speak to you here, this word goes inside of you because you are the soil. This word begins to germinate and begin to grow. The more you keep hearing the word, the more you keep praying, the more you keep praising, the more you keep worshiping, the more you keep reading the word, the more you spend time with God. It says it begins to deepen. It begins to grow. And the, the root begins to make, to go down in order to be strong and sustainable in you. The next one. He said, some seed fell on the path and the bird ate it. Now, you, the path is the way some. So what that means, it means that the bird that came to, to eat the seed represents Satan. Because the seed were on the path which represent the people who hear the message. But it is immediately lost. Why? Because Satan, when, when he hears the word that has been preached to you, the first thing he does is to come and take it away from you. Because the more ignorant you are, the more able or the more easily you are to be destroyed. Satan doesn't come to those who know the word. Remember in Matthew chapter 4, when Satan came to tell Jesus Christ, he couldn't stand because Jesus knew the word. Satan will never trouble anyone he knows uh, who have no word to them. Satan doesn't come to Christians who are Christians just by name. And he comes to those who are rooted and grounded in the world. Look at interpretation. There are people who don't live a good Christian life because they are focused on other things. <coughs> you know there are Christians or people who hear the word of God or believers, they hear the word. But the minute they hear the word, they still go and fornicate. They still go and steal. They still go and visit the, the witch doctor. So these are the preachers they're talking about. There are people who don't live a good Christian life because they are focused on other things. I'm sure you may have heard the people say, if I take away my Christian clothes, I will show you the things we don't like. People have told me many stories about those who call themselves Christian but still visit the man, still visit the witch doctor, still go to the crystal crystal body, still go to the soup soil. So these are the group of people. They focus somewhere else. It's not on God. But our focus has to be on God. God has to be the center of our life. Because if God is not the center of our life, we don't serve God, and God is not with us. Number three, some seed fell on the rocky ground, 
where there was little salt. This is part of the shallow, the shallow fish, you know, the shallow fish. The seed soon sprout, sprouted, but when the sun came up, it burned the young plant. What does it mean? It means that rocky means that rock stone. The seed on the rocky ground represents some people who respond with initial enthusiasm. But the word of God does not seed in need. When persecution or hard time comes, they easily give up. There are people that say, if, if you don't deny Jesus Christ, we'll shoot you. Say, please. They will transfer themselves easily. There are people that say to them, if you don't give up Jesus Christ, I won't marry you. You say, okay, Jesus must go. There are people that say to, they say to them, if you don't deny Jesus Christ, we'll not give you the job. They trust for themselves. There are people telling you, if you don't know deny Jesus Christ, you're not going to help your father and your mother. It happens. But you need to know who you are. I appeal to you always know who you are. Praise the name of the Lord. People, the, the blessings that people cannot commit to the Christian life start. They are initially attracted by give by, by up when the going gets tough. They accept easy. But when things are tough, you must know. Anytime you ask, what have happened? Oh, my job is taking much of my time. And you ask a sister, what happened? Say, so, oh, we have so many problems at the moment. I'm trying to sort them out, then I'll come back. But you wait for months, you wait for a year, it doesn't happen. Oh, people went last night in the bar. They drank so much that they couldn't wake up this morning. And they are here. Oh, the people tell you, oh, I, I'm focusing on my life. This thing of God after. I'm focusing on my life. I'm doing the things that pleases me. I've heard that many times. So those, they are foreign to the problem of God. Let's look at number three. He said, some sin fell more thorn bushes which grew up and choked the plant. So you follow the, the projection there. The message here is the thorn bushes choke the message of God. It is heard by the people concerned for riches and the worries about life cause the plant to die. We all work. We all are after businesses, after Accumulated wealth. But it cannot become a priority. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It cannot be your priority because we are God's people. The mark of God is in us. And when the mark of God is in us, we speak what the apostle Paul said to the Romans in Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He said, what shall separate me from the will of God? If God be with me, who can be against me? We have to reach that level whereby people make a statement. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. If God is with us, Romans chapter 8, 32, 32, 34, 35, you know it's coming. The Apostle Paul is explaining to the Romans in the Aspora that nothing, not in this, this one, not even a job, not even a business, not even my, my association, not even the weather, not even the time. It defines everything else. So the interpretation is that some people are too concerned with what other things, what other things. And they worry too much. They may be jealous, they may be angry, they may be bitter, or they may be concerned with materialism. I've always said to you in this house, you are not in competition with anybody. Don't let anyone's opinion become a reality in your life. People may think whatever they want to 
So the Lord, when you hear the word of God, and you're jealous of the one who has your own home, or you're jealous of your friend, or oh, why always them? Or oh, they like you when you master me, I'm always struggling. That's not the point. You hear the word of God, but the way you behave in your heart, that's not the most thing that Christ is in you. I've given you many testimonies here. People sing in the choir and they go home. They mistreat their wife. They mistreat their husband. God is not there. The last one. The last one is some seed fell on good soil and the plant produced corn. Good soil represents God. People who hear the message and live in it, live it. In the life. These are people, good soil represent the people who hear the word of God and live it in the life. So they live the word of God. They say you cannot steal, they don't steal. You cannot lie, they don't lie. You cannot envy, they don't envy. You cannot fornicate, they don't fornicate. You cannot go and sleep with someone who's not a husband. You cannot go and sleep with someone who's not a wife. Because the more people you sleep with, you carry the spirit with them. Amen. And when things are not working well, you start talking to the pastor. Pastor, I'm not feeling well. Pastor, I saw this in my dream. I saw that. But you don't know that you are the author of a second order of trouble for the church. Stop sleeping with men and women who are not married to God. Amen. Because every time you sleep with if you sleep with John, you'll be carrying John's spirit in you. Amen. Mark, Peter, Donald, Brian, Ryan, everybody you carry them. Amen. And then when you get married, on the dead man in love, or the dead woman in love, you are carrying the spirit of all these people. Amen. That's Amen. not your problem. Amen. No problem. You'll be looking for a demon. There's no demon. You are the demon yourself. And I feel sorry for all these pastors sometimes when they see people say, oh, this one is a witch, this one is a witch, this one is a witch. But we're not supposed to run away from the witch. The witch, witches have to run away from us. If you live right, the witch will not stand you. If you live in a good soil, good ground, fruitful land, the witch will not stand. Look at it, because some people have a strong faith and they make it get into a Christian lifestyle, even when things are difficult. Even things are difficult, they still stand. They still stand strong in the faith. My time is gone. I'd love to say a bit more, but for those of you watching me from home, Remember to choose who you are. Are you the wayside? Are you the lucky soil? Are you the dirty soil? Or are you the good soil? It was a confusing place as well as a privilege to share this word with you. But all I want to do is to tell you to spread the message. Go around and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. For your destiny. Is the hand of God. God bless you. So it's important, my brothers and sisters, we have this understanding that when we are in good ground, we do not.
todos 